Hello everyone. Today I will discuss the answers to very important pharmacological basis type question from the chapter of thyroid hormone and thyroid inhibitors. There are basically three very important questions from this chapter. The first being use of lugol thyroid for preoperative thyroid surgery. Now with our theoretical knowledge we know that lugol thyroid is a preparation of 5% of iodine in 10% of potassium iodide. Now this helps in three ways. The first is reduction of thyroid stimulating hormone and because of this reduction there is decreased vascularity of the gland. TSH is responsible for maintaining the vascularity of gland. Any inhibition of TSH will causes reduced vascularity. Now inhibition of TSH occurs because upon giving lugal thyroid there will be increased availability of iodide which then results in more formation of thyroxine and because of this more formation of thyroxine there is negative feedback inhibition which causes decreased level of TSH. Now this decreased level of TSH will reduce the vascularity and also it causes reduced risk of intraoperative hemorrhage. It also helps in making the gland form so the surgery is very easy and the action is a reversible suppression of thyroid function. It is having reversible suppression of thyroid function by inhibiting organification, transport and release of hormone. The next very question is also related with lugol thyroid only and it is why there is limited role of lugol thyroid for chronic use in thyroid oxidosis. To mark it is for chronic use in thyroid oxidosis. Now, as we know that high concentration of iodide, high concentration of iodide influences or affects almost all the steps of thyroid hormone synthesis. Now there is a effect known as Wolf Chakoff effect which says that there would be a reduction in thyroid hormone synthesis acutely. Now, there is acute inhibition of the synthesis of iodotyrosine and iodothyronine. This inhibition is caused by inhibiting the sodium iodide symporter, mRNA and protein. Because of inhibition of this, there is gradual decrease in iodide transport. Because of inhibition of sodium iodide symporter, mRNA, which is responsible for transporting iodide inside the cell, so inhibition of this will result in gradual decrease in iodide transport and causes lowered intracellular iodide concentration. Because of this lower iodide concentration, the synthesis will be reduced. Also, it inhibits the thyroid peroxidase enzyme. Now what happens when we give it chronically? Now, there is a phenomena known as escape of the wolf off effect. Now if we continue the treatment, if you continue the treatment for few days, lowered intrathyroidal iodide concentration below the critical level threshold causes alloying or resuming of organification of iodide and thus formation of thyroid hormone starts again. So it is a matter of few days that there will be inhibition of the thyroid hormone synthesis which will be known as Ulstack or effect. If we continue giving it for a longer period in a few days then it will causes it will causes increased synthesis or the synthesis resumes. That happens because of the because of the lower intrathyroid iodide below critical inhibitory threshold. Now, this few days differs from book to book. In the preclinical studies, it has been found that this escape of the wolf Sackow effect appears after two days in mice. Whereas clinically, before thyroidectomy, we give lugose iodine for at least 10 days and then we offer surgery. 
The third question is withdrawal of carbamazole before radioactive iodine treatment. Why carbamazole should be withdrawn before we start the radioactive iodine treatment? Now, radioactive iodine that is I-131 is also incorporated to form thyroid hormone similar to iodine. As iodine is utilized for the formation of thyroid hormone, I-31 is also utilized similar way for the formation of thyroid hormone. The carbimazole, it's an anti-thyroid drug and it inhibits the thyroid peroxidase to inhibit the thyroid hormone synthesis. Now what happens when we give radioactive iodine? Radioactive iodine is given then it will be utilized as I told it will, it will be utilized similar to iodine. Now as it is utilized to form inside the cell it will emit the beta and gamma radiation. Because of this property emission of beta and gamma radiation there will be formation of free radicals which will damage the DNA structure causing either cellular death or loss of its growth and division ability. Now what happens when we give carbimazole? Carbimazole if given it will inhibit the thyroid hormone synthesis by inhibiting thyroid peroxidase. Thyroid peroxidase. So when thyroid peroxidase is inhibited this iodine 131 cannot be utilized for the formation of thyroid hormone because the enzyme is already inhibited. As it cannot be utilized for, for the formation of thyroid hormone, it cannot get inside the cell and thus it will not emit the beta and gamma radiation which is necessary for its action. And that is why carbamazole should be withdrawn before we institute the radioactive iodine treatment. So these were the three very important questions which may come as pharmacological basis or rational type question from this very section. Thank you so much.